Earthquake Bear is incredibly powerful. The premise of the build is to use Rampage to travel through the map, and this is a channeled skill that'll also call down lightning bolts while you're using it. Thanks to the skill tree, Rampage will have no cooldown, meaning you can channel this in a direction, let go of the key, and then start in another direction repeatedly to get through the map. And these lightning bolts that it casts are frequent and deadly. Thanks to Rampage having no cooldown, you can quickly travel through the maps, and you'll see that you can just change direction whenever you'd like, keeping those lightning bolts coming. Now remember, this is an Earthquake build, and the reason this is an Earthquake build because when we get to the objective, we're going to go ahead and freeze them, and we're going to slam down with the Earthquake, and they're going to die. Earthquake does absolutely massive damage and is a tremendous boss killer for druids. To bring this build online, you'll need a Boulder's Wrath, and that's really easy because this item is actually farmable from the Spirits of Fire monolith at nearly a 50% chance to drop off the final boss. The item itself will give you a 100% chance to use Earthquake after using a non-channeled movement ability every 5 seconds. Well, we talked about Rampage, and that is a channeled ability. This is where Maul will come in. Maul is one of the skills that you'll gain when you transform into the Werebear form, and this actually jumps forward a short distance before slamming the ground, and because of that, it counts as a movement skill, which will in return proc the ability off of the boulder's wrath. So what makes Earthquake such an incredible boss killer? Well, compared to the five or 6,000 damage that we have on the tooltip of Rampage, Earthquake actually shows 155,000 damage as a tooltip. It does an incredible amount of damage. You'll also notice that Earthquake has a lingering effect and that multiple instances of damage will occur. This is important. That means that we can slam the ground with Maul, triggering the Earthquake, and then continue to move with Rampage, allowing the Apex Predator node to take effect as well, because we'll then be Rampaging, and the additional hits of Earthquake will gain benefit from this 150% increased damage. By using Warcry, we can further the burst damage that this build has as well. We can gain increased critical strike chance through a couple of nodes. We can also freeze the enemies, which will then allow us to amplify the damage through Frigid Breath. Overall, this is just a really nice node to have, as this also benefits the Roar skill that you'll gain when in Werebear form. If you look at the tooltip, you'll notice that Earthquake actually benefits from spell scaling, and this is important because we want to transform our Werebear in order to get additional spell damage to maximize the damage output of this build. Through both wide and claws in the specialization tree and various passive nodes which you can all find in the link in the video description we're going to boost our spell damage allowing us to just take down all of those high health targets like bosses Culling is the biggest reason that Swipe is in this build. This is going to allow you to kill anything with 14% health or lower instantly, meaning you can get a target low from an Earthquake. Rather than waiting for the next opportunity to use Earthquake again, you can finish him off with a Swipe. Just very handy. There's also certain bosses where you don't necessarily want to be moving around spamming Rampage. You may want to stay in place and that allows Swipe to kind of fill that time and do some damage rather than just standing there doing nothing. So overall, it has some use. Skull Crusher is an option in the Werebear tree, and this will allow you to get benefit from Fury Leap, and you could potentially swap Fury Leap in the build. However, you lose a tremendous amount of value by doing so if you don't have enough specialization points. Keep in mind, in the Werebear tree, you want to make sure that you have Unending Storm, as we talked about. This removes the cooldown from Rampage. All going to want that Wise and Claws note in order to boost our spell damage. We need the Apex Predator in order to get 150% bonus damage. That simply doesn't leave enough points to really go down and get Skull Crusher, unless you actually remove points from Crackling Assault, and then our damage output while rampaging goes down significantly. If you manage to get 25 specialization points, I would recommend taking Skull Crusher, and then removing Swipe and putting Fury Leap into the build. However, for most people, this will be the suggested setup. Brigand will round out the build, and there's a couple of very notable features and the reasons why we take this. The most important reason is Aura of Retribution. We're going to get plus 8% chance to crit and plus 72% crit avoidance. On top of that, we can spend two points in the passive tree just for some minimal minion damage and health increase, but more importantly, that'll unlock natural duality. This is going to give us plus 30% damage while the companion is active. Now, the pet is fairly squishy, but it's important to note that you still get the benefits of this as long as you remain in the vicinity of the pet, even if it's in the down state. That means when you're on a boss encounter, or where you need it the most, even if the minion goes down, you're still getting the benefits. So it's really not a big deal if it does. And while it's up, you just get a ton of healing as well. So whenever you begin the day with your gameplay, you'll of course want to summon your Spriggan. Now this is going to keep this active, and at this point you could turn into Werebear form, but I do want to point a couple of things out in humanoid form as well. You'll notice that although I didn't recommend specking into Fury Leap, I do keep it on the bar while in human form, and that's in case you get knocked out of Werebear form, which is very rare, but could occasionally happen. You'll have Fury Leap for the added mobility, and look, it's actually going to cast Earthquake when you land because Baldur's Wrath doesn't care which form you're in. Once your Spriggan's up, you'll want to go into your Werebear form, and at this point, if you're doing endgame content, which this build is recommended for, you'll simply start rampaging through the map, and you'll see just how many enemies are going to die. If you do happen to encounter anything that may have more health, you can simply hit them with one of those mauls, which is going to trigger that Earthquake, and it just does absolutely huge damage. 
You can always turn around and path through a mob a second time or even a third time if needed, but typically that's not the case unless you have high health targets. The enemy really has an enormous amount of health. Warcry to get those burst damage cooldowns activated and even the additional procs, then hit him with the earthquake and the target's gonna go down. There's just so much damage with this build. Now, Boulder's Wrath is the only required item for this build. However, there's a couple of other items that I really recommend. First up is actually Avarice, and you can get this really early on in the game as a quest reward. This build is fairly tanky by nature, and because of this, the leech that you gain from the elemental damage just keeps you topped off all the time. In fact, you rarely see your health actually drop down. There's also several passive nodes that we take within the tree, again, found in the link through the video description that increase our survivability as well. And overall, you won't have much difficulty staying in werebear form or staying alive. Dedication of an Erased Prime is the next item I would recommend, and this is because it gives plus one to skills. There's a ton of valuable skills in all of the specialization trees. In fact, boosting the skill points to any of these trees is really powerful for the build, and this just adds one to all of them. Both Titan Heart and also Kermode's Cage are two valuable items for this build. You can choose either one that you like. Titan Heart is going to add some survivability, increased health, really good, and pairs well with the leech that we have with the Avarice Gloves. Kermode's Cage is going to be a more offensive choice, and you're welcome to use this. Like I said, both of them work really well, and you can switch back and forth between the two. The rest of the item slots, you're really going to make sure that you have your resistances covered, and you'll do the same thing with your idols. You'll see that the idols are primarily resist. At this point, I'm only able to squeeze one additional damage, and we want to make sure that we're emphasizing lightning where possible. However, you're really going to be using these for resistance. Other valuable traits are going to be things like increased spell damage, increased elemental damage, anything that can really take the lightning damage that you have from this build and further it. Overall, this is a fantastic build, and the only real negative I have to say is that it plays terribly on controller. The reason for that is if there's breakable objects and you happen to have those targeted, it will run towards the breakable object, often avoiding the enemies. Likewise, if an enemy is targeted, it will run directly towards them, and you may want a path to the side of them, that way it's quicker to travel and complete the echo. Aside from that, the build overall is great, and if you play on keyboard or mouse, or even just a gaming mouse, it works just fine. As always, thanks for taking the time to watch, and have a great day.